Well, I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by the APS 2017 uh, President, Laura Green. Laura, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you for talking to us today. I'm delighted to be here. Isn't it great to be in New Orleans? It is great. It's the Big Easy in NOLA, and it's a wonderful place. <laughs> now, Laura, let's start off, if we could. Uh, we caught up uh, last year. Could you give us a little bit of a, an update on some of the things you're working on at the moment? Well, my focus is really materials physics and correlated materials physics. And it's a very exciting area that's expressed. We have whole new kinds of ways to grow materials, measure materials, and compute materials. And so I'm working with the NSF to get funding in mid-scale and quantum materials. And I'm also co-chairing um, a review, a decadal review on materials research for the National Academies. We'll have a town hall on that this week. And there's a huge amount of, like the Cavalry talks this week, it's a very exciting area, and an area that's rapidly changing. So, but you're uh, APS president, so you've got quite a workload, haven't I you? I do, I do. <laughs> and what, what's top of your list for the APS at the moment? Well, the, you know, the APS is really founded on the dissemination of scientific information. And so certainly these meetings play a major role. And the hallways, the talks, it's just terrific. But our journals are paramount. And so my role is really working hard to take our already exceptional journals and making sure they stay strong and grow even in the light of the changing face of you know, uh, the fact that there'd be some kind of open access and it's happening. And we're going to be working really hard with our publisher and our, uh, of course our, our editor-in-chief to help make this as strong as possible. So that's an interesting point, isn't it? Because the whole world of uh, content, content dissemination is, is changed so dramatically. Dramatically. It? But it's still one of the cornerstones of the APS, isn't it? It is the cornerstone. It is the cornerstone. And now I'd like to go on to what my theme is, maybe for APS presidency. Because we have our journals, um, we can do other things. And one of the things that is my theme, has always been my theme, is science diplomacy. Follow me at Laura H. Green, hashtag science diplomacy. And uh, so this is a way that through the actions and the words of science, we can make a better world, whether it's water resources, anti-terrorism, energy, and you sit at the same table and people that have, on paper, are not supposed to get along because of their governments or their skin color or their religion, we have a hook and we can sit at the table. And when you do that and you talk about the science that we can do together, and do it together, uh, you also find out that the children are a drag and things like that. So there's a, a world peace aspect and one of the umbrellas under that larger umbrella of science diplomacy is human rights. Right. And so I've been at Amnesty International about 40 years and I have seen through science diplomacy lives saved, lives helped a lot, scientists helping other scientists, and I can give you many concrete examples. I'll be working a lot with our Director of International Affairs, Amy Flatten, who's terrific at all of this. And I want to add more thing, one more thing about science diplomacy, is that since the presidential election of the United States, I'm working very hard with our Office of Public Affairs, who is our interim director now is Francis Slakey, to make sure we can apply that science diplomacy within the United States, to talk across the aisle. Whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, most of our legislatures do understand the importance of science. So to sit at that table together and help the United States be as strong as we are and remain strong in science and technology, I think that's an area that both sides can really be together on and, and work together. And, Hashtag science diplomacy. So. How optimistic, well, finally, let's pick up on that point. How optimistic are you on, on that uh, ground? Because there's so much noise going around Washington at the moment. There's so many people shouting at each other. Well, how optimistic are you that I you can I'm, make progress on that? I have a problem of being an optimist in almost everything, <laughs> so that's a problem. But, but I think what happens is, you know, our political climate is changing. Uh, Slake said every 35 hours. I think it's more like every 22 hours now. And the first thing we have to do is take a deep breath and see where we are and not go through epicircles. And uh, when things calm down, wor work on cases, you know, emigration cases, which I'm spending a lot of time on, and visa cases, work on those immediately. But as far as, as the political climate is changing so quickly, see where we are, nothing really changes that quickly. And other people will do other things that will be more political. I'm staunchly nonpartisan and working together through this nonpartisan to make a better United States and a better world working together, I'm very positive. I think that's the whole basis of Amnesty International is that most people believe that. And that's what I'm reaching out to. 
Well, thank you very much indeed for joining us. I really appreciate it. Thank it's a you. pleasure to be here. Thank you.